Hey gang, it's time for page two of the SDKFZ 250-3. To me, a buddy build with Brett G, that regular dude that builds plastic models. Let's get going. Okay, here we go. Um, just putting that lower track section together, just like we did the top ones. Um, you know, you can go back and look at the other video, the previous video, too. I'll put a link to that up top here. And it's the same procedure, nothing big, no big deal. There wasn't really a whole lot to this, this page. Um, the next page is going to be much better because there's much... Uh, we're getting... Uh, all the interior stuff and we'll get to start painting some things and whatnot but um you know this just went went together just like the top section um i'll tell you i did run into an issue um on one side where i kind of goofed it up and i'm trying to figure out how to deal with that right now where the track links didn't quite come together um but i'm going to keep that uh I'm going to keep that off camera for now and see if I can come up with a solution. And we'll worry about that when we get to it. Now, so as you can see, the top section, so the top section didn't stay in place, which actually ended up being a good thing, uh, which allowed me to, to manipulate this a little bit more and discover that the instructions, what the instructions call for is one link too short. So that spare track link that they give you is actually not a spare. <laughs> at least, at least it wasn't in my world. Um, so um, here we're just, uh, so what I did was I would, uh, I, I would attach it to the front, attach it to one end, doesn't really matter which, get it formed and I would form it just by putting more cement in the joints and forming it through and then I set it down on the tracks and and um, glued them to the road wheels waited for that to set up and then finished wrapping it around the idler and, and that worked fine um, on this side the other side not so much um, but that's okay. That just gives me a reason to buy the dragon kit, right? <laughs> I'll do the dragon kit one of these days too. I'm kind of I'm looking at the been looking at the figures, and I'm kind of frustrated that um, they put Rommel in the leather coat because I'd rather have him in the. You know, there was a a brown desert um, cloth coat that was the same same pattern basically and i'm I, I need to look at it look through my references and see if i can get away with doing that as the um the long coat the the tropical issue long coat um i'm i know it got, got cold in the desert and that's why they had winter gear but i don't or cold weather gear but i the leather coat just doesn't work for me in my head. And we all know about my head. <laughs> well, maybe you don't. Maybe you're just learning. Um, anyway, so see, I'm just guiding it along here, kind of working it piece by piece. And we will, once I once that front sets up enough to where it's going to stay on that idler, I will set it down. And put a um, put a weight in there and glue it to the to the uh, to the road wheels. Where I screwed up on the other side is I had glued the top track section to the road wheels. I well I had actually tried to do that on this side on the other side or on this side too, but it didn't hold, which turned out to be a blessing. So um, and so here I'm just putting some cement down there on the where the track hits the road wheels and um, put my weight in there if I can get it where I situated where I want it 
There we are. And we'll put some cement in there and we'll just wait for it a little bit. Tick tock, tick tock. So there we go. And now we wait. Okay. Um, so this is, you can see where I actually put the rear of it together. Now we're moving on to the front suspension. Um, I've taken all the parts, cleaned them all up. And we're just going to start gluing the sub-assemblies together here. There's not very many pieces here. Um, and it doesn't really take long to to get it together. I was kind of looking at the drawing upside down for a second, so I got kind of confused. But And I'm sorry I'm out of the frame right now. I'm just putting the leaf spring on at the moment. Um, you know, interestingly enough, pretty old technology on this thing. Uh, single, single leaf spring across the front. Um, it looks like the the suspension bar just pivots at the rear. Um, kind of an interesting setup. I'm 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 kind of curious as to how well it actually worked. Apparently, it must have worked fairly well. I mean, obviously they used it, but. And this is like the lower, the lower beam. What would you call this? An I-beam or what? I don't know. And I had to put some MEK on there to get it to stay. It wouldn't stay in place. You got to be really kind of quick with that MEK or it dries. It dries pretty fast and... I got it on there soon enough there, but it should have been a little faster. Okay, there's our basic sub-assembly. And now we got to put the steering, the, the uh, steering linkage all together. So I had forgot the crossbar for the steering linkage, so that's what I'm doing here is getting that off the sprue. And now i got to clean it up. You can see the nubs on it there from the tree flash sprue um, so I'll just take my file here and just uh, file it right off real quick files may seem a little extreme but as you can see they remove material really fast and you don't have to throw them away like you do standing sticks. So for some tasks, they're better. I like them because they're rigid. When you got a flat surface you're trying to keep flat. They they work really well. I'm not uh, when I'm trying to see keep a surface flat on a sanding stick. That the best thing you can do is is put the sanding stick on a table, and then run the part back and forth on it. But that's even not ideal. So anyway. So now these little uh, steering parts are kind of a pain in the neck. Um, so the spindles snap in basically to the to the upper and lower ball joint, kingpin. I don't know, whatever we want to call that. Um, so there you go, and this is kind of scary. <laughs> Because it's like, man, don't break this thing. It's pretty, uh, pretty fragile. Um, but as you can see, it went in no problem. And it wasn't. Uh, it may not have been the best series of uh, the best way of putting it together, just because of the steering linkage. Um, I got to do some more clean up there on some of those, some of that flash. That's not a problem. Little stuff like that you can fix later. So now this thing goes across. Uh, if you can do it without breaking it. All right. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, there's lots of areas I need to run liquid cement and just to get rid of 
some flash or some sanding residue or you know whatever stuff like that no big deal you can do that all later and this is on the bottom so who cares come on this was a little a little tough I was trying to be delicate with it and it wasn't really allowing me to be <laughs> it needed it needed quite a bit of pressure to get that thing to go in there and and it was um I was a little worried it was a little worrisome so but it went on so there we go and as many of these linkage things actually do they don't seem to um, line up quite right they seem to have a little bit of toe in always so you know the the solution to that is to always just tilt the wheels one way or the other that way it that way it's not they're not pointed straight ahead and because when they're pointed straight ahead it's obvious that it's got some severe toe in so what we're doing now is attaching thinking about attaching that making sure everything that we got we got everything in the right place i was a little confused on this sometimes i don't know i would look at it and it's like that doesn't look right um <clears throat> and i was right because i, I was trying i was thinking about i was i was upside down in my head in my head i was looking at it upside down so we're going to glue the assembly in which may have not been the smartest thing to do i should have probably done the actual rest of the steering linkage first but i didn't So anyway, you can see that goes in there quite easily and sets up really fast. And then we'll come back and we have some sway bar links and the Pitman arm there. That I just dropped somewhere shake it out there we go so we're going to place the pitman arm it's going to be a little bit of a booger but we'll get it in there and uh this is not the right pair of tweezers i should have had a pair of tweezers that had some serrations in them and that were had some wider jaws which were probably on the sitting on the bench but these were what i had right in front of me so these are what i grabbed because i'm basically lazy <laughs> okay we're going to put another dab of cement and then we're going to take something that we can manipulate that with and poke it down a little bit i would guess Oh, I must be happy with it where it is. Typically, I will take something sharp with a part like that and make sure it's seated. But I didn't. Now, these little sway links or whatever they are, I think they're sway links. That's what they look like to me. Um, they were kind of a pain. But we got them on there. So what I tried doing was... I was just trying to figure out, okay, which end do I need to glue on first? And so what I ended up doing was putting the glue on the chassis in that depression there and then putting the part, the the link in there, and then attaching it to the, to the spring slash axle assembly. But I decided I better do the linkage first. And this linkage was really kind of funky <laughs> it wasn't real clear what you were supposed to do but I figured it out um, well I guess I shouldn't say it wasn't real clear but it was just kind of 
kind of goofy, you know, it wasn't, um, it doesn't look, I mean, once you get it in place, it kind of just moves all over the place, and you can't, um, oh, it doesn't actually manipulate anything, because it just, it's just um, the steering shaft there, the pitman arm or whatever you want to call it that comes out there. It doesn't move. It doesn't rotate or anything. So having this be a moving part is kind of silly. I'm trying to figure out how to get my hands in there. I mean, you got to put pressure on there. So there's no doing this really with a... Uh, a tweezer or something you really need to get in there and and, and get some fa get some pressure on it now if I had had some smooth jaw pliers handy I could have probably got in there with some smooth jaw pliers once I got it somewhat in place and and squeezed it on there and I might have done that I don't remember now it's been about a week um, Okay, so here we go. Well, maybe not. And now, let's see. Yeah, so here's what you got to do. So you got to put that on there. So I'm trying to figure out, trying to get it on with my fingers. No bueno. And that thing's not really dry. There we go. I got it pushed into place. Now we'll put the links, the sway links on. It's not so much that these are really tiny parts and are hard to work with, as it's there's just no place to get your fingers in there. And, and um, I guess I'm kind of a. I mean, as much as I like tools, I like to get my fingers in there on things. And it's just not an easy thing to do here on this model. At least not all the, in all the different ways here. All these tiny places. So we'll get this other sway link on here. And that's it for this, for this, uh, this page of the instructions. Um, steps four, five, and six are complete, and now we get to start on some some of the cool stuff. Um, start throwing some paint, and I got to figure out what we're going to do on that interior. I found reference photos that show that um, it was definitely not gray inside. Well, well, some of them, not this particular one. I don't have a reference photo for this one in particular, but uh, so we'll go through some references left next time and really see some different stuff so here we're going we're doing a little different on this side okay come on okay there's some some mek and we'll put this thing in place come on come on you there we go All right, all set. So hey, there we have it. Oh, there's the tires. So I did not glue the wheels on. And then I'll show. You. We're gonna have a photo here in a second with show you it for with the wheels on it. I didn't glue the wheels on. I want to paint them separate. So I did kind of deviate from the instructions a little bit. But uh, that's it for this episode. And take care of the people you love, and we'll see you next time.